Today I'm going to start the last part of this, uh, the first half of my course, and I'm going to, we are going to finally, we are going to, to, to leave uh, the electrostatic behind, and we are going to start electrodynamic. That means that now we are going to actually study charges in movement, and when you have charges in movement, you have like a bunch, you have various phenomenon, phenomena that are very interesting. Uh, and we are we are going to start with the first one that is uh, the concept of electric current this is not unfamiliar to us since we learned this in high school but this remember that we mentioned that in the first lecture when we studied here electric charge one of the main properties of the electric charge is something that is conservation of course and I, we just mentioned today we are going to study that with a little bit more depth so let's start my friends let's go uh, we define let's consider that you have a conductor here uh, represented by this cylinder and we have the electrons like move inside this cylinder and this cylinder has a certain area a in general we represent the electric current as as the we denote it as a letter i and we put like an arrow to represent the direction to which the electrons like move in the conductor this doesn't mean that is is a vector this is just representing that the electron is actually moving from left to right in this case here and we say that the average electric current i right is represented is the temporal rate at which the, these charges they they flow through a given area in this case i'm saying that this is the given area right so analytically we can write the electric the electric current as uh, delta key delta q sorry delta t is a typical way is a very common way to represent this is uh, the average the average current right in this conductor um, <clears throat> so this is important this is a definition how we we find how we calculate how we estimate like a current you know as i remember right this variation in charge here this is actually dependent on the number of electrons and of course this is going to depend on the elementary charge of an electron the se units for this let me put the print color here the se units for the electric current is the ampere this is a tribute to a French physicist called André Marie Ampère right he is responsible for many studies in electromagnetism and if you see here our definition of electric current we we know that uh, the charge unit of charge is coulomb and the unit of time is second this is terrible terrible let's start again second and this we call ampere sometimes people say amps as well and this is very important to to mention here this is a base unit unit base unit the same like mass and temperature for example right the same like a kelvin and and kilograms or length for example meters so this is a base unit this uh, 
also sometimes right remember physicists they like to play these tricks you're going to see some texts and this is going to be coulomb why so no. choosing magnetism sometimes you can see this and it's going to be coulomb second minus one also this is the same okay this is important to mention and if you are interested in the instantaneous electric current or simply the electric current not the average we can actually use a limit to to define this and this from this what we call actually the electric current is going to be the limit of this average current when this interval of time is incredibly small is actually tending is going to zero is tending to zero so you are interested here so this in this definition And then this is going to be the way that you in college we approach problems involving electric current. You're always interested in instantaneous uh, electric current or just electric current defined as this one in, in a infinitesimal um, time. So this is going to be the QDT. And like we learn in calculus, this is what we call this differential element of charge divided by uh, divided by an uh, infinitesimal element of time or infinitesimal time, the QDT let's make this prettier okay and this is very important that we are going to use for a bunch of problems and if you are interested in find the total charge in a conductor all you have to do you have to integrate this expression here you can use I think it was Euler who actually you start using this kind of um, this kind of uh, notation for the differential so that we can actually work like a, any rational number you can say that actually the the total charge all we have to do is just integrate from zero to a given time t i dt this is nothing new for us nothing new okay but just let to emphasize the importance let's keep these expressions here and let's see what else we use what kind of use of information you can get from the electric current one very important property here is uh, as we mentioned before we mentioned in our first class when you talk about the properties of the charges is that actually the electric current is conservative right uh, obeys well why cool. let me just go back here back 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 so if you consider let's imagine that you have these uh, conductors here right and you have one charge i0 entering like a junction a uh, what you can measure 
in the other two conductors here if you sum up like this i1 and i2 this should be exactly the same like i i0 that means that the charge is conserved so this is very important concept and actually this is what uh, Kirchhoff said this is, is uh, actually known as the Kirchhoff's first law and we say here we have to say that the charge is conserved and for this particular case that we have here that means we can write uh, that this charge here or these two charges here E sub zero is going to be uh, uh, sorry not EI I1 plus I2 that is the same to say that the algebraic sum of all these currents right i0 minus i1 and minus i2 this should be zero actually this is the form of uh, Kirchhoff's uh, first law also known as the ju junction law and this is very important to keep in mind it's you can make an analogy like water and coming uh, running through flowing through a pipe and heating like a, any junction so what the volume that you can see you can see in the other pipes the sum of these individual values here should be exactly the same right the the, the volume that was uh, not the volume the flux that was uh, flowing through uh, this part of the uh, of the junction the left side of the junction okay so let's go another important thing to say that is written in your textbook remember that uh, actually doesn't matter the spatial orientation of the the wires of the conductors for the current uh, current is not a vector current is a is a scalar and every time you see the arrows here below right the currents this means this is just referring to the direction to which the current the electric current is actually flowing and it's not related to a vector whatsoever so please keep this in mind so to avoid any kind of mistakes let me put this here and I would like to since some one of the main goals here is to give you better models to represent like a physical phenomena one of the main things that we are interested in here is actually to understand how electricity runs in in metals and to understand that we have to introduce the concept the concept of what we call L, uh, current density that is pretty straightforward there is no it's not difficult at all let, let, just me finish it like uh, organizing this left my god why this is like this okay. but before I go to that let's make one small exercise here just to understand what is going on let's imagine here this circuit okay guys um, and this figure is representing like just a small portion of a circuit and is asking to find what is the magnitude in the direction of the current that is actually flowing through in this branch here in this part here of this circuit so this is pretty pretty much forward right we have to remember that the current is going to be conserved so if you have let's analyze for example this junction here right if you have two amperes coming from the left to the right and three ampere coming entering from in this part here that means that definitely I'm going to have 
by this principle of conservation of uh, electric current, I'm going to have 5 amperes here in this branch here, definitely. All right, let's make this a little bit bigger. So, mm -hmm, now, now you can see very well. Okay. And, okay, you have five amperes coming here. That means, and you have, for example, two amperes here and one ampere here in this junction here that means they're uh, coming out of this junction right three in total three that means that definitely i have three amperes running in this junction these three amperes here and i have five five entering here three getting out so that means this branch here in this wire I ha I will have two amperes two amperes all right let's analyze now this junction here in this junction I have four amperes plus two amperes entering that means that I will have six amperes in this small branch here, six amperes, and finally we, we reach the last junction that is we have interest. And if I have two amperes entering here, and plus from from the uh, right plus six from the left, that means I will have actually eight amperes in this branch here. So, and this is the, the answer. So, using the principle of uh, conservation of uh, the electric current, we can easily find this, right? We have to just choose the appropriate junctions and start like applying this principle. You can easily find this. Okay, okay, let's move now. Let's make one problem, guys, to try to, to exemplify what we just learned and then let's move to the the concept of current density the problem that I've decided to solve is the problem 2 from the textbook uh, and this problem says that we have an isolated conducting sphere with a radius of 10 centimeters and one wire carries a current of 1.00000 2 compare into this sphere and another wire carries a current of 1 ampere out of this sphere how long would it take for the sphere to increase in potential by 1000 volts so are interesting in calculating here the the time that is going to take for this sphere to to increase its potential in in 1000 volts Okay, let's uh, let's separate here. What do we know? We have we know the radius is one times ten to minus one meters. We have the the current that is uh, entering the sphere and the current that is um, leaving the sphere. We have to calculate the difference right between that to see because uh, this is actually that we are interested. This difference is two times to ten to minus six amp amperes, and this difference of potential is one times ten to three volts. Okay, so the electric we can we know this from the previous uh, chapters, right? From the previous yeah. lectures, that we can write the electric potential. And the electric potential here is going to be one over four pi epsilon zero. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time here. Sorry, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very bad at making this by hand, so I really have to use the the software. Uh, Q. Oh my God. R. Q. 
over r so you have this expression here for the voltage so this is going to be equation one i know that one increase in potential actually represents actually a variation here so all you have to do here is actually consider a variation so i'm going to have actually i just have to include this variation here and i can write this variation in charge because actually i do have how the this charge is varying right the problem gave me so i have here from this expression i can write that this variation in charge is going to be four pi four pi times epsilon zero times r and times delta v so this variation in the voltage this is going to be my equation two this is equation two and of from we just learned right a couple minutes ago that our the electric current here is going to be the variation in this charge in time is the rate of charge the rate of charge by time is the temporal rate wow temporal rate here dun, 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 dun. The, the, the. and from here i can clearly calculate right i have the, the delta t is going to be uh delta the delta uh, q divided by i the current and the i i just know is the difference between the currents entering and leaving this uh, spherical this spherical conductor well i can substitute everything here guys see if i do this right This is going to be four pi epsilon zero r delta v over divided by da, 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 da. these guys, these two guys here. The difference between these two currents and that current and if you substitute that you are going to find if you plug in the values that i put there you are going to find that this difference the time the time is going to take for the sphere to increase uh, its potential in thousand volts is going to be approximately 5.56 times 10 to minus 3 seconds and this is it for now and I'm going to move to the next concept that I uh, want to teach you today that is the concept of the where is it the current density and this is pretty easy as well i put here the whole explanation but well, let's go back to the first page and let's do it here we have this what we call the electric density and is denoted by the letter j so i can put everything here the, the this electric density current density is denoted by j and it's pretty straightforward all we have to do is actually divide the current i 
divide by the area this area a that was defined before uh, this arbitrary area a and as you can see let's this has a similar mathematical form that the, any kind of density right when you are interested in the typical density for the for example in mechanics is the mass divided by the volume and we learned like different kinds of densities before like the charge densities like linear charge densities and surface charge densities and volume charge densities as well it's always the same so it's just a ratio right so nothing new here but to represent the current is going to be easier for uh, for many problems so let's put here so this is what we call current density and the units here is going to be ampere per square meter Ampere per square meter or meters squared. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, guys, and like we did before, uh, this area here actually can not necessarily can be like a cross-sectional area in this case we can actually define this as the we can use like a, a vector to represent that right since um, this area can actually rotate not necessarily cross-sectional and you can generalize uh, the electric current actually represent the electric current as this integral here you can integrate and you can calculate this is scalar product between the electric density and this area can, uh, that for for cases that uh, both are parallel right so this is exactly the same the first equation that you, we found there all you have to do is just multiply the electric density by the area and then you can find uh, the left current this these two expressions here right they are e equivalent so this is the definition of any kind of um, like a regular way of defining a density is just a ratio between a quantity uh, two physical quantities right one is the in this case current and the other one is area and this one is a more robust more powerful way of representing using uh, integrals and this color product okay let's see let's try let's make one one problem to see how we can actually um solve this this class of problems let's see how many minutes you have six minutes okay i think we can solve and i'm going to solve this problem i'm going to solve the problem number 10 from the textbook let's make this very big and we have the magnitude j of the current density in a certain lab wire with a circular cross section of radius r equals two millimeters is given by j equals three times ten to eight this is a coefficient right multiply by r to the power uh, squared r with j in amperes per square meter and radial distance r in meters what is the current through the other section bounded by r equals 0 0.9 r and r 
equals like small r equals big r okay so guys so this is the expression for the current density that we have we also is known the area right we can calculate this area here and this area is pretty much forward since this is circular cross section all you have to do is multiply pi times r square so this is going to be the the area and if you are interested in the differential element of area dA right to calculate the integral later this is going to be dA is going to be 2 pi r dr 2 pi r dr and we have everything that we need here if I wanna calculate the cur current density I can calculate the current from the expression that we just pre present for the electric current density this is going to be the integral from 0 0.9 0 0.9 r to r of this j d a we can substitute like these expressions that we have here in this integral this is going to be 0 0.9 r r this is going to be 3 times 10 to 8 r squared multiplied by 2 pi r dr we can resolve this integral here to put uh, the constants outside of integral this is going to be 6 pi 6 pi times 10 to 8 is outside of this integral this is going to be 0 0.9 r the uh, inferior limit the superior limit is going to be r and here you have r to the power 3 the r this is very easy integral And if we solve this, it's going to give me three halves of pi times ten to eight R to the power four minus zero point six five six one six five six one R to the power four. And if I substitute this, right, I have there's this radius here, the radius is two millimeters. I can find that the electric current right, for this particular wire is going to be 2.59 times 10 to minus 3 um, amperes or amps some people say amps I'm going to use ampere dun, dun, dun. Okay, this is all I want to know for now. Let me like highlight this result and show you here. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, let's move to the next one. I'm going to stop this video for now. I'm going to start the next one.